Hey there everyone, Faish here, back again with another video and in this video we're going to see that how we can convert a Flask app which is made in Python in a Docker image. Now this is a really basic Flask app that we have created which obviously runs on a web and just give us a hey message, hey Python. Now Flask is one of the most easiest way of how you can build a simple Python application on the web or maybe just APIs. And yes, there are other ways like Fast API and Django and a lot of database could be involved, but slowly, baby steps. We're moving through the journey of going through with the Docker. So this is the most easiest one. The whole idea behind creating these kinds of videos is so that you understand a little bit journey about the DevOps and sometimes you even want to know that I don't really understand what is the business logic in these applications that developers has coded. I just need the bare minimum information and via that information, I can make a container or I can make an image out of any application, whether that's coded in JavaScript or in Python. Let's just assume I don't know Python. Let's just assume I don't know even a tiny bit of Java. And still, I'll be able to host these applications. The today's turn in this specific video is for Python Flask application. Let's go ahead and see how we can do that. This is the one of the most easiest one that you can do. So I don't even need to check what's there in, inside the index.py. The first thing that is important for me is the requirement. What are the requirements for these applications? Now, this is where you actually go ahead and interact with your developer. He says, hey, this is a basic Flask app, which needs to run on the port 3000. That's all I care. And that's all I really want to know. I don't know what it produces as an output, what success and all of that. That's the developer role. We just want to put this application as an image and obviously we want to push it onto the Docker Hub just for fun. Okay, all right. So first thing we're gonna do is simply go ahead and say a Docker file. So that's what we want. Now in this case, this is a Python image. So we want to take a base image, which is going to be a Python image. Now there are a lot of Python images available, both for version two and three, but obviously this is a Python three version that we want to call up. So really simple, we start with the base image, always and always with the base image. So the base image in this case, we are going to go ahead with Python. I'm going to hit control space and it can give me a lot of suggestions. So I'm going to go ahead, put colon, then again, hit control space and gives me a lot of versions of these images. So in a minute, there we go. We have a lot of version of Python 2. I'm not interested in that. I'm version 3. That is where I'm interested. And you can see from 3.16 to 3.15, a lot of version 3.16 seems a little bit too much updated for me. So I'm going to go with uh, Alpine 3.15. Alpine is nothing, just a stripped down version, a little bit lower in the size, but again, depends on what kind of Python is being used in your application. You really want to consult with your developer a little bit on that. All right, so this is the basic. Then uh, what we do is really the basic. Uh, this remains common in most of the applications. So we define the working directory. You can put it just in the slash, but it is not a good idea. So you always want to have a directory because this is like an operating system, almost like, and in that, the slash is very sensitive directory. So you want to create a new directory, just like you have a desktop, something like that is there. So we do just the app and it doesn't need to be always like app. It could be just Hitesh, but Hitesh doesn't seem great. The app is actually much better. Then we go ahead and simply say that, hey, we want to copy and the copy some information. Uh, there are ways how you can copy, then run the command, then can copy rest over the files. These are caching and all these optimization. We don't want to go into that as of now. We simply want to say, hey, copy everything that you have and just go ahead and put it into slash app. So that's it. We defined a working directory. We move all of our files into that working directory. That's what the basic of this image does. Then obviously we need to run some command because when you take an image, which is based on Python, it is based on Python. The Python is installed in that, but all the requirements like Flask, maybe Django or something else is not present in that. So we need to install that. So we go ahead and run the command. In case your company or you deal with a lot of Python command, uh, you should run these few of these commands. The first one is actually pip install. And then we pass on a flag of dash R, which gives all the requirement in a file. So which is going to be requirements.txt and make sure you don't do typo because I do a lot. Uh, requirements uh, should be the exact same file requirements.txt. So make sure you take care of that. Once this is done, that means in a new image, which is based out of Python, all the files have been copied. All the requirements are also done. The only thing which for this basic Flask app remains is exposing the port and then finally running the app. So let's go ahead and see that. We have seen that in the last video as well. We can go ahead and say, hey, expose 3000. It always doesn't need to be 3000. It could be 5000, 8000, whatever the port makes sense. You want to expose. 
out of that machine machine or an image uh, you can go ahead and do that and finally you have to fire up a command we'll talk more about these in the series itself of the docker by the way i do already have an existing series but i want to freshen it up so we're going to go ahead and have some command and the command is really simple it's just a python file which we want to run in the same directory remember we have already mentioned our working directory that's where all the things happen we'll say dot slash index dot py so we want to run this base file and based on that there could be 100 other files on dependencies or all that this is the entry point we want to mention once you do this that's it that's your basic docker file not too much of the command obviously as the complexity begins to increase uh, maybe that's a django file just basic sqlite or maybe postgres is involved maybe mongodb is involved there's a lot of things that can come up again and based on that we have other files even Spoiler alert, Docker Compose is there, but we don't want to talk them right now, at least in this video. But this is all what you have to do. This is a great exercise to build up a lot of images and all of this. Uh, by the way, in case you want to go for that, uh, here's a basic Python file, or you can just go for, here's the basic Python file, you can pause and write that, but I don't recommend this. I recommend you to go on to the Flask documentation. Let me just show you that. Actually, it's super easy. Let me just go ahead and open this up. So if you go ahead on to Google and just say uh, Flask, uh, hello world, you can just go up into the, a lot of files are there, even the Flask, quick start documentation, a lot of great websites are there, which actually helps you out there. Uh, we'll go on to the Flask, uh, Flask uh, getting started. And there it will give you the documentation of how you can get started with the basic application. So notice here, uh, this is all you need to copy. Uh, this is the route slash on which uh, hello world is being defined and you are just running it and that's basically it. It can do all the job for you. Uh, there is additionally a couple of more lines that you can write, uh, but this is all. This is all you need in case you don't are not able to find or don't want to write it. Just go get it up here. That's all. That's all you need uh, for the practice purpose. In case you are seasoned in Python, you want to write a couple of more lines of code like if and all of that, that's fine. If you don't write it, that is also fine. Flask actually works without this as well. All right, so we got this one. Now let's go ahead and try to build this as an image. In case you have followed the last video where I showed you how you can build images uh, using the Node.js, uh, this is almost going to be similar that with that, but I'll show you that. Again, the fact, the requirement is you should have Docker installed in that, uh, on your machine at least. So the way how we do it is simply say Docker, we pass on a command to build, and then we pass on a dash T. The dash T is to give you a tag, and I always, always prefer that my tag should be something which comes up from hub.docker.com and your username. In my case, I've already logged in into this. So I can check my profile and this gives me my username. So this is hey Node.js. we pushed it in the last video. And this is my username. So I go up here and I say that, hey, I want to tag it first with my username, then whatever the name you want to probably define here. So in this case, I would like to say, hey, dash Python. Uh, Python Flask would be better because I do have a plan to push up more Python projects and show you more example with the Django and a couple of others as well, but no promises on that. And this is the basics. Hey, Python Flask. So this is the app. Now, again, we'll talk about these tags. You can go ahead and say latest. This is the default tag that when you pull the image, it pulls up. But if you don't want to pass it on because we'll be incrementally updating it, you can go ahead and say classic 0.0.1.1 release uh, again if you don't pass on anything pass on latest that's a default tag but you can go ahead and pass on this as well once you have done this the most important part is put up a dot this dot defines that the docker file based on which this image should be created is available in the current directory which is docker file now if i go ahead and show you my dashboard on the docker desktop in the image we have just the hey node.js uh, with the tag itself, we'll be creating another one. I can go ahead and show you by refreshing it. Nothing is there. And uh, we can go ahead, hit run this. And this is going to take just a few seconds because it's not a big image on that. Depends on your internet speed as well, but I think it should be fairly easy. And now we have got uh, this basics up here, copied and all of that. So I should have another image. Uh, in theory at least. So there we go, Python, hey Python Flask, and we have got the same tags and release and all of that. 
So now what I want to do is I want to run this image first because before pushing it to hub, I obviously want to check out whether this actually works or not. So to run that, all I can say is Docker container and then I can run this app with a dash D, which stands for detach mode. Hey, don't keep my terminal busy. Give me my terminal back and you keep it running in the background. And then we obviously need to expose the port because it's a web application runs on a certain port. And I would say, hey, in the Docker, the 3000 port it's where running. And on my main machine, I can be saying 4000 or I can say 3000, wherever you want to map those port together. And then obviously I have to mention these uh, name, which says, uh, hey, Python, hey, Python Flask. And I have to give it the version because otherwise it pulls up as this default. I don't, I haven't given that. So I'll say zero dot, oops, my bad. Accidentally hit enter. <laughs> okay, we're gonna say uh, zero dot, z oops, zero dot one dot release. That's a long one. And then all I have to do is hit enter after that. So I'm gonna hit enter. And this is supposedly, in theory, if it is all correct, is going to run a container uh, behind the scene for me and will be exposing a port on my main machine. It's taking a little bit while. Probably did I hit enter something wrong? Let's try to find out where it is going wrong. Uh, right now, nothing. And the image is there. All right. Let's wait for a couple of seconds. Did I accidentally run some command wrong? All right. Uh, let's let's actually close this and let me open it up as a full screen so that we can actually borrow this name. Uh, maybe I did accidentally type something wrong. Okay, all right, one more time. This happens to every one of us. Docker, container, we want to run the container. We are saying, hey, run it in detach mode with a port exposed of 3000 and we'll map 3000 on our real machine as well. And then I'll paste this one as it is. And after a space, I'll hit enter and there we go. This time it works, probably I mistyped something. I'm sure here or probably here, I don't know where. Okay, so this is now running and I can verify that by saying docker uh, container and I can say ls, small for listing down. So there we go, container is running. Now let's quickly check on port 3000 whether we are getting uh, hey Python this time. Ah, great. But what if I want to stop this? So I'm going to go ahead and say docker container uh, stop and I want to stop uh, 07 6 F. So I want to stop that. I want to run this command again, but this time I don't want it to run on my main machine for 3000. I All right a small gl glitch and now it's recording back. So, okay. So what we are trying to do is we were trying to uh, just change the port here. So let's go ahead and say, uh, we're gonna go ahead and run this Docker container and we want to just quick LS, nothing so far. And we want to run this. So we're gonna say Docker container run. And what we want to do is run in the detach mode with a dash P option. And we initially uh, went through with the 3000, but on the, my main machine, now I want to expose 4000 port, but on the container, it's always 3000. That's what we mapped while building this image. So that should be fine. And now we simply go ahead and mention that, hey, this is the image that we want to run and that's it. So it gives us a 97C. So let's go back up here. So if I go ahead and check it out, this is where st recording stopped. 3000, nothing is there. And if I go ahead and say 4000, there we go. So you got the idea. This first one is my machine port. This is the image port. I cannot change it once the image is being built. But yeah, I got the idea that how this is being done. So let's go ahead and say Docker container stop. And I want to stop 99 and I can just run. Uh, no such container 90 or 97, my bad, 97. Okay, all right, so now all the containers should be freed up. Uh, this means I can push this uh, particular image onto the Docker Hub so that anybody can use it. I'm gonna go ahead and say Docker, push, and uh, I'll name this one same. I'll say that Hitesh, my username. 
And then all I have to do is, actually I can copy and paste this one. I've already got this as my clipboard. So there we go. So this is my username and this is what I want to call my image. And of course you have to pull in the tag with this exact release. Otherwise, if I just say it colon latest, then it will pull the latest, but this incremental update will help us later on as we'll be studying the Docker. So this is the basics. Let's try hit that. And obviously it will take a little bit time, not much, but a little bit. Can we do a fast forwarding in the editing? I think yes. All right, so finally it's being pushed and let's go back and see onto the Docker Hub whether we got uh, Python as Flask. And there we go. All right, we can see that Hey Python Flask is now available. And we can see that, uh, there we go. Anybody can use this one. Of course, they also have to use the tag, uh, this tag exactly. And this will help to get them this file. All right. So again, uh, you noticed here that as a Docker or as a DevOps engineer, you don't have to too much worry about what's happening, what is the business logic and all of that. You were just responsible for creating the image. And as you will move forward, you will realize that this is the image that somebody needs to give you and you can run as many containers as you like of this exact image without worrying about what's the business logic, what's this. But again, yeah, this much of the piece you need to write. And uh, this is mostly available on the internet, on the documentation or through such YouTube videos, which I'm pretty sure you're going to subscribe as well. That's it for this one. Let's go ahead and catch up in next video.